Hi guys, now we are done with the technical difficulties. I was on my private page doing the live stream. Uh, but welcome to the Channel Zero Butcher's Block at season three of Channel Zero. And just to let you guys know, it premieres next Wednesday, February 7th on Sci-Fi, 10 p.m. And this is an anthology series, so you do not need to have you do not need to watch the first uh, season and the second season. You'll be able to uh, just go right into the third as an anthology series. Um, we do have some questions uh, today. And hi guys, hi from Chile. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, so basically, uh, Channel Zero Butcher's Block was created by a guy named Nick Antosca, an amazing man that uh, you know hired me and, and I have the pleasure of uh, working for an incredibly creative uh, writer and uh, the stuff he comes up with is pretty wild <laughs> so hopefully you guys will tune in and enjoy his work uh, we have a um, our director for the season was a woman named Arkasha Stevenson and she's she, I always say she reminds me of um, she, I, I mean, directors are artists, but she reminds me of a visual artist because she thinks in such gorgeous abstract terms, and I feel like she's an abstract splatter paint, and that's her process of directing for me, um, just in my humble opinion. And so the two of them together created an amazing team, and this show is about two sisters named Zoe and Alice Woods. They have mental illness that runs in their family, and... I am the older sister, and Zoe knows that she has schizophrenia, and it does tend to be genetic, so they're worried that Alice could also have it as well. So they want to move to a town for, with a fresh start because they've had some other family issues in their particular hometown, and things start to go awry in this new town. And are they seeing things? Is it a, a some symptom of, of schizophrenia, or in fact, is this actually happening? And that's that's the premise for for the uh, for the show. I apologize about my very laid back look. Uh, weekend, I just got done working out, so this is what we're working with today. Um, so we have some questions coming in, and will you come to my wedding next year in Brisbane? It might be a little far, but thank you for the invite. Um, on uh, Channel Zero related questions. Um, what characteristics does Zoe have as a character? Um, she's dark. Um, I think she also has a sense of humor. She views life through almost childlike eyes half the time. And then I feel like the other half, she's, um, you know, she does deal with some pretty dark demons. And it, it's almost this two sides of the same coin when it comes to, to her childlike play and her fear um, is almost she almost has fear like a child uh, because of the the delusions being so uh, intense and terrifying so she never knows when another episode is going to arise and she doesn't know in this new town she can only assume it's her head and not the town's problem but is it uh, so that's the gist of, of Zoe um, I think for the most part they get along as sisters and uh, sisterly banter and, uh, you know, sisters fight. So you'll see a little bit of that as well. Um, Olivia McCarty, this amazing actress uh, from New York and, and Rome. She's also, I think, Roman as well. She plays uh, the Alice Woods. And so I am her big sister. And she was absolutely lovely to work with. And it's because of her that we moved to this new town for her to start her new job and have a fresh start. So she is the protagonist of the story and we see this world through, through Alice's eyes. And uh, I don't want to give too much away. This is almost a little bit Teen Wolf related because I don't know how much I can give away. I'm like, well, there's this town and what happens in the town? Um, but I had an, a blast working on it. A, we were filmed in uh, Winnipeg, Canada for four months, and I um, am proud of what we, we we made, so hopefully you guys enjoy it too. Uh, we have a really talented cast. We've got Regar Hauer, we've got Brandon Scott, we have Lyndon Porco, we have um, Kresha, if any of you guys saw the movie Kresha. She's she's such a talent, and uh, we got really lucky to have, to have the cast that we, or I got really lucky to work with the cast that they got. Um, 
on, on Channel Zero. So I just was just feel really fortunate. Um, any other questions? Um, was it awful for you to have to smoke in the show? This is actually a great thing to talk about. I am allergic to cigarette smoke, deathly allergic to nicotine. Um, but as an actor, we have to adapt. And in television shows and movies, when you see people smoking, they're not actually smoking real cigarettes. So I dodged a bullet there. Um, and, you know, it's my personal belief. I don't believe in smoking. I'm pretty vehement, vehemently against it. Um, but, you know, I think characters that I will play in my career could be smokers. And so I've, I've learned to divide the two. Um, I think smoking just to smoke, I think if only if it's a character choice, if there's an intention behind it, if it makes sense, um, that's that's when I would choose to, to smoke on a, on a show because I don't like the message that it does give out. However, um, if there's an actual reason behind it, it's not some, you know, some people say this about nudity, but this is how I would feel about smoking on camera is if it does make sense. And it very much makes sense. Um, some types of schizophrenia um, are relieved, the symptoms are relieved from the nicotine. So they'll change smoke and Zoe is no exception. So that's why she smokes in the show. Um, the next question is, lots of New Zealanders today. Well, hi guys. <laughs> uh, well, what else is going down? Uh, do you, team more Team Wolf questions. Well, thank you guys for watching Team Wolf. I will I never, you know, never miss an opportunity to thank you guys for loving the show so much. And I think if you like Teen Wolf and you like the suspense and uh, the creativity, then I think you'll like this show as well. Nick actually wrote wrote for the first season of Teen Wolf. So it was a nice homecoming to, uh, to get to say his words again. Um, the next question is, let me see. I'm going to pull one up here. I don't know if I can... I told you technology and I don't get along. So I think I'm back. I think it's live. Um, so I'm going to answer some questions from that fans had for the show, uh, for Channel Zero. And hopefully I'm going to get this right this time and not click out of, of the live session. So I apologize for the delay. Uh, so let me see. We've got what do... So I'm not sure what got on camera and not because I'm answering like six questions in and I get a text... I don't think you're live anymore. So what do Zoe and I have in common? I would say that we have a, a this I, ability to be entertained quite easily. We could watch paint dry. And so there's um, a childlike attitude that I think she and I both uh, attain. And I would say there's a great scene with animals. I don't know how much I can give away, guys. Uh, that was fun and I think that Holland would have a similar reaction that Zoe did in that particular scene. So there's that and then I next question is how do I feel about horror and I always say the same thing when I get asked this question is content is king for me. Um, you look at things like Guillermo del Toro's work, uh, What Shape of Water or Pan's Labyrinth and that's horror that's winning Oscars and so I believe no matter what the genre is, um, the genre of good. That's that's the genre that I like. I like to, you know, hopefully be a part of only those projects, and then I also like to only watch those projects. So, um, be it comedy, be it a romantic drama, be it uh, horror, it really just matters about the story for me. So that's that's my horror bit. Um, a dream part. I would say one of my dream parts was taking on Zoe because of the mental illness that the show deals with and I think it's important to talk about and to create content around and so I was really honored to be a part of this show uh, because it dealt with schizophrenia and schizophrenia is such an incredibly large umbrella of uh, diseases and I, I didn't know that until I was researching for this project and I discovered multiple, multiple personality disorder versus delusions and that's the two that I looked into in particular, but there's, it's, it's, uh, I think in the 50s and 60s they changed all these particular different names into one big umbrella of schizophrenia. So, I, um, 
this is a particular one where she's dealing with delusions more than more than personalities um, but sometimes it overlaps into uh, talking to herself and you're not sure why she's talking to herself so uh, so yeah that's that was that bit um, so that's why I, I I'm attracted to this project and that's part of my dream job another I guess part of my uh, I'm trying to think a dream part for me would also be anything with period I love I love period pieces um, so I'd say that's also up on my line. Anything with uh, nonfiction, even though it's daunting, um, I think nonfiction is fun to tell as well. So the next question, um, tips I would give to aspiring actors. I would say start locally um, is the best advice I could give. I'm from Texas. I'm here right now, actually, in my sister's old bedroom. They've repainted my bedroom to be my brother's bedroom. So I stay in my sister's former bedroom when I come when I come visit. But I, um, I lost my train of thought. What was the thing? Yes, it's fine, actors. But yeah, I would start locally. Um, plays, student films, anything you can get your hands on. Um, the internet's obviously changed the uh, landscape with how much you can get done with a phone or, um, you know, just putting things on tape and sending them over, over email. And so, uh, and yeah, there's so many different filming locations around the United States and even, you know, all over the world. So I would say if you're in one of those countries, you could get involved um, in, in the work there. Uh, the next question would be, who's the funniest person in the cast? That's a really good one. We had a really funny audio guy named Leon uh, on Channel Zero, but we work with, just in case you didn't get this earlier, we... Brandon Scott, um, Krisha Rucker Hauer, um, my the protagonist of Channel Zero is a um, a girl named Olivia Lucardi, and she's a doll. And we had so much fun working together. I would say actually she might be the funniest person as well. She's really funny. I was gonna say Brandon, Brandon, if you want a expert in escape rooms, which by the way, shout out to Winnipeg, Canada, the best escape rooms in the world. Um, they have got some puzzle masters in Winnipeg. During those cold winters, they are making puzzles. That's what they do. Um, and Brandon was... I, I debate if I want Brandon on my team uh, for <laughs> for an escape room because he's too good. He solves it too quickly where you're like, yep, I'm I'm useless. And it, it really was. It, was. it was sad. But uh, but a lot of fun to watch him solve everything. Um, what <laughs> grossed me out if anything, during this filming, that was one of the questions. <laughs> this is a test to fear factor. Uh, we have to eat a lot of interesting items on this show. And that was actually one of the things they asked me before I booked the show, if I had a problem eating a thing. And I don't. Um, I might rethink that question. <laughs> there, I, I realize how much I don't like gelatin. That's something I don't really care for. So, uh, so yeah, I would say the gelatin thing is not my thing. Um, I like flavored gelatin, jello perhaps, uh, but the unflavored gelatin, having to eat it with like, almost like swallow it whole, not fun. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I don't know what I can tell. I had, um, a one, I had one scene that was, I was eating an animal and that animal was cold with all of the tendons still left in it and it had mint uh, a mint flavored sauce all over it and so the two did not go together at all I don't want to give that away but that's the best I can talk about the grossest thing I had to eat during filming without giving it away um, so yeah I don't yeah I can't tell it's it's this is another show shrouded in mystery um, like very similar to Teen Wolf so I'm not able to uh, go into much detail, but yeah, we do, we do eat a lot of, um, what it's supposed to be is disgusting and what it actually was, was not great. So, but it's all in good fun. It's, it's what we do. It's why we do what we do. I mean, we're all in it for the experiences. So just bring them to me. I, uh, I'll see if I can take it. And, uh, this, and this one gave me a run for my money. Uh, what is my favorite episode of Butcher's Block? Well, we actually block shot all six episodes. So Keeping the episodes straight for me, I almost viewed it as a six-hour movie versus versus six separate episodes as far as um, my process went thinking about it. So I couldn't tell you my favorite episode. 
but as it airs, I can. <laughs> uh, the next question is, do we need to, oh, so yes, just to clarify, I did earlier, but I'm not sure what recorded or didn't record. You do not have to, oh, there's kids riding their bike on the street, it's really cute. <laughs> um, you don't have to watch season one and season two to uh, watch season three of Butcher's Block, of Channel Zero Butcher's Block. They're all anthology seasons. So uh, every, each season is a separate story. It starts next Wednesday <laughs> uh, on Sci-Fi, uh, February 7th at 10 p.m. Um, let me unlock this again. Hmm. Next question is, what's the best story you have from filming Butcher's Block? I would say Lyndon. There's, a, there's an actor named Lyndon Pork and he's amazing and he always had the best spirit um, on set and he, whether he was working or not, he would show up to set and, and watch at Video Village, which is where, uh, you know, the producers, the director, um, everyone sits and, uh, and watches what's being filmed and so he was always there learning and just taking it all in and that was something I really admired about him and he always kept the spirits high because this was very much like Teen Wolf, um, a lot of nights and a lot of uh, wet and cold situations um, that you guys don't have to actually go through to to enjoy the show. We do it for you. So he was out there with us every night just taking it in and that was really cool to watch. It's probably one of my best memories is just watching Lyndon come to set and, and crack jokes and keep spirits high. Um, is there anything people should know about Butcher's Ball before they watch? Um, to reference earlier, it's about two sisters. Uh, one is, uh, has been diagnosed with schizophrenia and they wonder if the other one, uh, Alice, my younger sister, also has schizophrenia. And so she wants a fresh start due to some family problems in their town, finds another job. They move to this new town, she and her sister, myself, and, uh, and things ensue. And is, are they imagining it? Is it Alice actually coming down with, uh, you know, is her schizophrenia um, coming to the surface? Does she have it? We don't know. And so that's uh, the, the beginning, the initiation of, of what kicks off Butcher's Block. She knows you Butcher's Block. Um, the next question is... Oh, I have not read the original Creepypasta story. I tend to not watch um, or read stories that, that have already, um, that are just sort of uh, reimagined from, from that particular story. So I knew it was based off the, a particular creepypasta story, but I wanted to come in fresh um, with, with our spin on it. So I, so I did not read this story. Uh, the next one, I think that's it for the questions that the fans wrote in. Um, they were all versions of, of these kinds of questions. Um, oh, what TV shows I'm watching right now? I can make a plug right now. A plug that I'm not in. <laughs> um, I absolutely love Harlots on Hulu. It's about 1700s uh, South London. It's about two brothels, two competing brothels. Samantha Morton and Leslie Manville are absolutely phenomenal. Leslie Manville is also in the new um, movie Fountain, Phantom Thread and gave... <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis run for his money. So um, that's a really fun show. Harlots, check that out. Also, loving a new show uh, called Dark on Netflix. It's a German show. It's weird because it's dealing with the first dubbed, dub, dubbing situation where when you dub, it's you see the mouth of the actor saying something different than what, they're, what the dubbing VO is, the voiceover is. So that was funny. Um, to watch. It's a bit distracting. I don't know how you guys do it with Teen Wolf and Channel Zero being being uh, translated to other languages. It was driving me crazy. I would rather just read the subtitles and have them speak their language. Uh, just personal preference. So I commend you guys for watching dubbed television because I get it. That's that's a lot of times the only feasible option for you know long-term use. You don't want to have to read everything. But um, it was quite funny because I just hadn't, um, I had never dealt with that before. So outside of that, because I'm looking for, I actually would love to find the German version of the show and just have the subtitles. That would be nice. But yeah, Dark on Netflix. I would check that out as well. 
Um, if you like Stranger Things, if you like Teen Wolf, I would check out. I would check out Dark. Um, they even have a couple. I actually was gonna text Jeff this. They, they a couple segues um, in between. Uh, so that's the tidbit for for that question. Um, I think that pretty much was my all time favorite TV show. A show called Utopia. Uh, it's a British show. And my all time favorite movie, it's too hard to pick. I have like a top five and it's always changing. But um, I love Harold and Maude. I think that was like the first true indie movie made. And so Harold and Maude is one of my favorites. And Hal Ashby, the director, is an editor and he won an Oscar for directing. And I love that he came from an editing background because I don't think editors get enough credit. Um, so that's my favorite movie if I had to choose. But like E.T.'s up there. Titanic's up there. Um, as good as it gets about Schmidt. Um, Roby Michelle's High School Reunion. I mean, story about cats and dogs. Like I've got random movies that are, that are my favorite. I mean, there's so many good ones. Um, Shawshank Redemption. So yeah, that's a, that's a little tidbit. Oh, but Miss Doubtfire. Love Miss Doubtfire. Home Alone. I'm a kid of the 90s. Born in the 80s. Um, my favorite book. It's really tough, but I've said this before. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. It's quite good and made it to a Broadway play as well as, what's the other one? Um, oh, Red Notice is something I read recently. Actually, a book I just read is called Sapiens and I highly suggest this book. It, yes, it's dense. It's, it takes a long time to read. I audiobook it when I'm walking my dog. If you've seen me walk my dog, listen to Sapiens um, or I'm listening to a, an a, a, audiobook of some sort. Um, so yeah, I would say that. My favorite podcasts are Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin and Super Soul Conversations on Oprah's podcast channel. Um, I also was just recently recommended a philosophy podcast that I'll be checking out. So stay tuned. I'll get back to you guys on that one. Um, I think what's the hardest part about playing Zoe? I'm trying to pick. Um... Keeping her grounded in such a fantastical mindset when you're playing someone who uh, has schizophrenia. That, I would say that was, that was something that I really hope comes across correctly um, from, from my standpoint. So, yeah, I would say that's the biggest challenge for me playing Zoe. Um, if I weren't an actor, what would I do? Such a good question. Um, I probably would be a war correspondent, um, journalist, photojournalist um, overseas. And I would potentially be a lawyer. I've always thought human rights um, cases are interesting to work on and you literally are changing, you know, at least a small piece of changing the world to be a better place. And so I'd probably either, somewhere in there, they kind of overlap. I love um, foreign policy, I love politics in other countries and, uh, watching how other countries function. And that's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I would also maybe be working with some sort of a conservation. Um, a Jane Goodall situation is, is right up my alley. Um, she's, she actually came to talk to our school many years ago when I was in grade school and it was pretty inspiring to watch all of her videos um, and hear her speak. So yeah, that's what I would be doing. Too, never too late, I might still do that. Um, what motivates me? <laughs> uh, staying employed. <laughs> um, honestly, just the older I get, the what motivates me is, is just having good friends and hanging out at night, playing games. Um, I think it's important to stay young, and so I'm always up to no good with, uh, what probably averages like a 12-year-old boys behavior of paintballing and and flag football and rock climbing and so I try to stay active that's probably what motivates me is to want to stay in good shape treat my body right so that I can do the things that I love pretty logical um let's see let's answer some current questions um do I like old horror movies or new horror movies? That's a good one. I mean, there's a lot of great new horror movies out, but I probably traditionally learn from the classic horror movies. Um, the Man Who Knew Too Much is one of my favorite movies. Um, Birds, Rear Window, um, The Thing was really was really great. Um, 
So yeah, those are probably my favorites, just in particular. Um, oh, that's an ugly shirt. I love this shirt. That's okay. You don't have to like this shirt. Um, and let me see. Are there any characteristics you took from Lydia to Zoe? This is Elijah Mosby. Mosby? Mosby. Mosby. Um, funnily enough, they have a lot of scenes. Lydia, as well as Zoe, have a lot of scenes by themselves. So I took, I would say, that came over from Lydia to, to Zoe is having a lot of scenes where you're imagining something happening and um, not knowing if it's true or not. That's, that's a huge similarity the two of them have. Um, their approaches are very different. Uh, Zoe wears no makeup on the entire show, except she does her makeup at a particular point, but she'll know. So she wears no makeup. She's very, um, more dressed down. I mean, the op, the antithesis of, of Lydia. So that was different for me. My hair and makeup took five minutes. It was amazing. Um, and yeah, looser clothing, my body didn't play as big of a role, um, you know, when you are amongst very hunky boys uh, for many years, you know, it's it's a part of that world is that, you know, you, you wear cute clothes and on this particular project, uh, the clothes did not outweigh the the scene or the purpose of the scene. And in Lydia's case, she was fighting for that sometimes. So, so yeah, that's the biggest uh, difference between the two is that Zoe's very played down. Um, oh, you're very sweet. Thank you for some of these compliments. Um, can you say one word in French? Uh, je t'aime. <laughs> Season so oh. <laughs> No. You guys are very cute. Well, thank you for all of these uh, lovely comments. Um, but, yeah, I would say... Um, if you guys are interested, I hope you guys like Channel Zero, and it starts again next Wednesday, February 7th, on Sci-Fi. So, and check your local listings, um, 10, 9 Central. And, uh, yeah, I hope you, if you have any other questions about, um, about Channel Zero, and I, again, if it didn't pick up earlier, um, Arkasha Stevenson is an incredible director. She was an absolute joy to work with. She's very much a performance director and she, she pulls the most interesting examples to get the performance that she wants. And the kinds of examples that she asks you about when she pulls you aside and goes, let's try it this way. She's all about playing, uh, you, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Um, we can always bring you back. We can always take you down from the crazy, just go there and see what it brings us to the scene. See what it brings to the scene. So I, I loved that about her. And when she would you ask me questions about my life or she would usually sometimes tell me a story about her life. And it was just, it was really such a personal way to connect to your actor. And I really appreciate that out of her. And so that was an incredible experience for me to have as an actor working with Arkasha. Um, Nick was lovely. He and Arkasha, are just I laugh because they're so creative and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys think um, you know if you check out check out channel zero and uh, hopefully you like the show and if you guys have any more questions any more channel zero questions I'm waiting last going once going twice <laughs> well thank you so much for uh, for oh can I say something in Polish Palatskis? It's the donuts, whatever those are called. Um, I'm terrible at this. Um, but anyhow, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your weekend. And thank you so much for, for stopping in. And hopefully uh, you guys like Channel Zero next Wednesday, February 7th. Thanks guys so much. Bye.